this evening. Second Timothy two verses twenty and twenty one. Second Timothy two verses twenty and twenty one. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honour and some to dishonour. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honour, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. There was a problem in the church at Ephesus, the church in which Evangelist <coughs> Timothy here is labouring. According to verses 17 and 18 of 2 Timothy 2, Hymenaeus and Philetus were teaching heresy, the heresy of preterism, placing the resurrection from the dead in the past. And this was gangrene that affected and ate up other doctrines. And then, verse 18, they overthrew the faith of some. Other people too were carried away with their false doctrine. This problem raises three other issues. What is one to think of the heretics and those who have made shipwreck of their faith? And if this were to happen here, what would we think if someone here did such a thing? Were these people who have apostatized truly elected before the foundation of the world? Did Christ die for their sins? Had they been regenerated? Can a truly saved person actually fall away and perish everlastingly? The apostle says in verse 19, Nevertheless, even though the faith of some has been overturned, nevertheless... <coughs> The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the truth of election. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and the calling of the elect, that every one that nameth the name of Christ be sure that he lives a life of departing from iniquity. The second issue, which the apostasy of some in Ephesus raises, is what is one then to do? with respect to the heretic and those who make shipwreck of their faith. And if this were to happen here, how would we relate to such people? Verse 21 deals with this. If a man therefore purge himself from these, those who have apostatized, he shall be a vessel unto honour, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and so on. We'll say more about that later. And then this third issue rises. How is one to conceive of the visible church, including this visible church? And this is verse 20, which constitutes the heart of our text this evening. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honour, and some to dishonour. It is fitting that this instruction is found in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy is Paul's last inspired epistle before his fast approaching martyrdom. Paul had seen a lot in his time as a Christian and as an apostle. On more than one occasion he'd seen heretics arise in churches that he'd been used to found as well. And then people led away from the faith through their false doctrine. And he'd also seen the heart searching and grief that this caused in the church. And now just before his death he tells us how to evaluate it. The second reason why this teaching is appropriate here is that 2 Timothy is a pastoral epistle. That is, it's written to Timothy, who is in the extraordinary 
and temporary office of evangelist. And evangelist is not what we would think today when that word is typically used in the contemporary church scene. An evangelist is, according to Ephesians 4 verse 11, the third highest office in the apostolic church. The risen Christ sends up to give some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists three extraordinary temporary offices, and then fourth, some pastors and teachers. And other passages deal with elders and deacons. Now it's in this pastoral epistle, written to a pastor of sorts, higher than a pastor actually, that we have valuable directions to pastors, elders and deacons, the ordinary and permanent offices in the New Testament church. And in this pastoral epistle, therefore, we also have directions to members of the church. Instruction concerning the membership of the visible church, verse 20, apostasy, and relating to heretics and those who apostatize, verse 21. So the Apostle Paul here writes to Timothy and to us about vessels in a big house of all things. What's that got to do with anything? I thought we were dealing with the church. And some people drifting. And he brings up vessels in a big house. But this is the imagery of our text. And this gives us our theme this evening. Vessels in a big house. First, the meaning. And second, the calling. The great house of verse 20, or big house, or large house, is an image of... For the church. <clears throat> to be more specific, we're here speaking about the Institute Church. And by Institute Church, we mean a church instituted with office bearers, pastor or pastors, elders, which are always needed in the plural, and deacon or deacons. Church with office bearers and members. The instituted church which has the authority from Jesus Christ to preach the word, to administer the Christian sacraments, to exercise church discipline, and to distribute the mercies of Christ, the visible church. Or to say essentially the same thing, but from a different perspective, the great house or the big house in our text is the visible church. The institute or visible church. The church which becomes visible so that you can see it in real living members. You, believers and their seed. A church which becomes visible not just in people, but in people who become active in the preaching and hearing of the word, in the worshipping of Almighty God, and in Christian witnessing and all the various callings that we have as a body of Jesus Christ. Now in this big house, which is the visible or institute church, there are essentially two types of vessels. There are vessels unto honor, or vessels of honor, or to honor, vessels of honor, and Vessels of dishonor. Only two types, not three. The vessels of honor are described further in verse 20 as gold and silver. The vessels of dishonor are wood and earth. And by earth and vessel we would probably say ceramics. Like plates and saucers and cups often are made ceramics. Now, whether a vessel is a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor, here doesn't have anything to do with its use as such. Not whether it's used for honored guests and brought out as your finest sort of kitchenware when someone special is coming around, 